Doy ahora la palabra al general de división, Patrick Gauchat. Thank you, Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished members of the Security Council. I'm grateful for the opportunity to address the Council, sharing the perspective of the United Nations Truth Supervision Organization, UNSO, on the situation in the Middle East. Mr. President, the events of, seven, of Saturday, 7 October, surprised, shocked, and appealed everyone, and the conflict they have triggered continued to reverberate in the region. Since UNSO does not have a person presence in and around Gaza or southern Israel, UNSO personnel were not in a position to observe directly the events of the 7 October or developments since. But those events have assuredly impacted our operations and regional dynamics. Mr. President, the history of UNSO goes back 75 years. On May 29, 1948, this council called for cessation of hostilities in Palestine under Resolution 50. This truce was to be supervised by a UN mediator assisted by a group of military observers that would become known as United Nations Truce Supervision Organization, the first peacekeeping mission in the history of United Nations. In 1949, with the signing of four armistice agreements, one between Israel and each of its Arab neighbors, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, and the Syrian Arab Republic, the Council declared the role of the mediator complete and transferred the role of supervising the implementation of the armistice agreement to the Chief of Staff, Anso. In addition, Anso was also tasked with the assisting the parties in their application and observance until the peaceful adjustment of the future situation of Palestine. That two-part mandate remains the basis for ANSO's presence to this day and is accomplished through, one, deploying expert military observers to maintain unconditional ceasefires, and two, maintaining a strong regional liaison with host nations. Mr. President, on the operational level, from 8 October, many ceasefire violations have occurred across the blue line between Israel and Lebanon, and then on the Golan between Israel and the Syrian Arab Republic. And so's military observer, who constitute Observe Group Lebanon, OGL, and Observe Group Golan, OGG, under the operational control of the UN Interim Force in Lebanon, UNIFIL, and the UN Disengagement Observer Force, UNDOC, respectively, took appropriate and adapted security measures. They continue to fulfill the critical role of assuring accurate military reporting, accurate military observation, investigation of ceasefire violations, inspection on the Ghana. And these reporting enable liaison with the parties, including for the purpose of de-escalating tensions. During the last few weeks, the adaptations were mainly logistic, security, rotation, and deployment of personnel. Since 8 October, the military crossing points, which ANSO uses between Israel and Lebanon, as well as between the Israeli-occupied Golan and the Syrian-controlled Golan has been closed. Similarly, the access points to the closed observation post, located just after the IDF technical plants on the Golan, were sealed, impeding the rotations and the logistical support. Through good dialogue with the parties, and so was able to put in place the minimum required support and security for the deployed military observer. In southern Lebanon, where a very clear escalatory pattern is observed, and so military observer in OGL still conduct blue line patrols every day, taking calculated risks. As part of the wider work conducted by UNIFIL, this international presence influences restraint, 
by the parties in their kinetic activities. Our female military observers are key in connecting with local women and children across the area where ANSO is deployed, noting our exemplary percentage of female officer, 22% in the mission. The everyday liaison function of ANSO military observers include engaging with local population, local leaders, and military commanders. I want here to add that their presence during the current tensions in South Lebanon is reassuring for the local population. Mr. President, in parallel with the work of the military observers on the ceasefires lines, UNSO maintains liaison offices in Cairo, Beirut, and Damascus, as well as in Jerusalem for Jordan and Israel. UNSO regional liaison mandate allows the mission to analyze and address complex issues, especially those not covered by other missions operating in the region, whether peacekeeping or SPMs. It also allows us to be in direct contact with the five parties. And I want to stress a very good contact with all five parties, passing messages and establishing tactical confidence building measures. I have done that numerous times since 7 of October. In each of the capitals of the five hosting countries of ANSO that I have visited, authorities have shared their view on the regional situation as well as on the ceasefires in which ANSO is involved through OGL and OGG. For instance, on the Blue Line area, officials of both Israel and Lebanon communicated to me their willingness to improve security and implementation of the Security Council Resolution 1701. On the Golan, both Israel and Syria mentioned to me their very strong will to keep the armistice in place, and they also shared their concerns and their expectation of the peacekeeping system. On this basis, I shared, of course, these messages with the parties and my relevant UN colleagues, as this contributes to the overall effort of the United Nations for peace in the region. During these exchanges, I systematically try to diffuse potentially dangerous situations, clarify positions, and ensure my interlocutors that I would pass their messages. This was always well received by the parties. Mr. President, in conclusion, ANSO continues to perform its regional mandate. You can rest assured that ANSO is a vibrant mission of women and men, national and international, military and civilian, true to the concept of unarmed military observer mission operating with the consent of the five countries and parties. As the regional situation evolves, we will continue to contribute towards the comprehensive, just and peaceful resolution of the situation in Middle East, consistent with the mandates given by this Council. Thank you, Mr. President. Agradezco al General de División Goyat por la información que ha proporcionado.